Okay, Lissa, hi, it's Jan. I'm here with Kathy McKenna, and we are getting ready to do our episode. I'm super excited. Um, I'm just going to read her in and get started. Are you ready, Kathy? Ready when you are. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to Oh My Health, There is Hope. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I'm so excited to have Kathy McKenna with us. I am a huge fan of hers. Um, Kathy battled infertility and cancer in 2008. She was immersed in her journey to transform her life as a a strategic approach to health and wellness. She knew she had to start sharing her journey as an example of what is possible when you bravely step into your true self. Kathy is a two-time number one international best-selling author with her chapters in Silent Grief, Healing and Hope, and Joy, Recipes for Abundance, where she bravely shares her journey through infertility and the path of joy. And now an Amazon number one best-selling new release, co-author of Oh My Health, There Is Hope. I love her. I'm super excited that she was in this book with us. And these books, are they include stories that will really inspire and touch your hearts. So Kathy, thank you so much for being with us today. I want to mention one more thing before you start talking because it's, I'm so excited about it. Kathy was also most recently named Wellness Influencer 2020 in the Las Vegas Entrepreneur Magazine in their April 2020 issue um, for helping women step into their healthiest, happiest, most inspired versions of themselves. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for that incredible introduction. Um, it's always an honor to chat with you. And I love our chats. I feel like we could talk all day because we just have this um, dynamic where we just roll into conversation. But I know today we want to talk about something very specific. We do. We're going to talk about Kathy being in this wonderful book. We both have our copies that we're holding up. We love them. Um, but yes, the the book, Oh My Health, There Is Hope, is literally, and when Kathy said she would put a chapter in there, I was so excited because not only is she an incredible author, but she has this really powerful story that is inspiring and I know is going to put that ripple effect of change out into the world that I hope the book does. Kathy, we, do you mind telling us first a little bit about who you are, what you do, um, who you serve mostly, and why you are doing it? Sure. So I am a transformation coach. I work with women who are either burnt out or on the verge of burnout. And we work through a combination of wellness coaching and life coaching to get them to release the burnout, gain energy, gain confidence, and just step into that person that they're meant to be, that ultimate vision for their life. I love that. I know that there's a reason that you do what you're doing. And I think that's so important because when I talk to people and I connect them with coaches, the coaches that I work with are so passionate about what they do because they walk that. They know, they know what you're feeling, how you're experiencing it. Sometimes you feel hopeless, but they're here to offer you hope. Absolutely. I always say to my clients, I can't take you anywhere that I have not been myself. And so it was my transformation. It's been my learnings, my habit change, everything that I've learned and lessons learned through the life events that I have gone through to get me to this place. And it's an ever evolving journey. Every day I learn something new. I'm reading, I'm going to summits, I'm continuing to gain knowledge, not only to help myself and better myself into the best health that I can be, but also to utilize those tools and give back to my clients to help them shift their lives. Well, do you want to share a little bit about what your chapter is all about in Oh My Health, There Is Hope? Sure. So my chapter is about living mindfully. And, you know, I'm guilty of this as well. For the longest time, I was just focused on what I ate and whether or not I exercised. And I thought that would, you know, bring ultimate perfection, ultimate confidence. And through my journey, I realized that I was not addressing a major portion. And that is what was going on in my head and my heart. And so I had to step back and say, you know, I'm doing all the healthy eating. I'm working out. I'm moving my body. I am taking the supplements. But the reason that I was still not the healthiest person I could be is because I was hanging on to all of this anger, hurt, bitterness, from all the life events that I went through, I had not gone through the process of healing and releasing so that my mind space could be in the best place it could be. I love that. 
I, I, and I love that you put your story in the book and I, I was very inspired by it and I've heard it before, which is why I wanted it in the book so much. How do you think your story is going to impact others? You know, my hope is that even if it impacts one, it, it's worth sharing my story, but I think it will impact others in that it will force them to take a step back and really start processing all those thoughts that are going on in their head. Right? These thoughts in our head are not just there for some random reason. And we need to set ourselves up for success and really work through what we're dealing with. Well, I know we were going to talk a lot about the book, but really before we started the podcast, we were talking about when this will air and will we should we talk a little bit about mindset and COVID. But here's the thing. We, we just agreed that we may not be talking about living in the COVID right now moment, but how is this going to impact us, impact us and our future? And what is that going to look like? And you were even saying that the, these beliefs that are given to our children and to us moving forward, how do we deal with those? And I really, because I have you on here and you're an amazing transformational coach, I really want to talk about that with you. What do you think it looks like in our future? You know, I think mental health is going to be immensely more important coming out of this pandemic than it is today. I think that we need to be aware of what our children are, are feeling and working through because this is as much of a, a shock for them as it is for us as adults. As adults, we have you know, built-in coping mechanisms. We have brain development. We have all these things over all these years. These kids don't have those abilities. They don't know. And so I think this sets the tone for them on how they're going to deal with any future disruption or trauma in their life. And we have to take that step back and say, how am I showing my child to deal with trauma? What am I showing my, my surrounding neighbors, community, how we lead through this disruption? And, you know, it will become more important to start talking about mental health younger and younger and, and make sure that our kids have that support that they need through this. I think that children's, um, the way they see things is a hundred times more intensely than we are. Cause you're right. We have the coping mechanisms to, to filter through what is real, what isn't, what, you know, this will end and this is, we've got a plan, but little kids depend on us. And so what we're saying, the things we're saying and doing are causing limited beliefs in them now. You can't hold you can't hold Nana right now. You can't hug, you can't kiss, you can't touch. You have to wear a mask if we're going outside. You can't go riding your bike with your friends because, because, and all they're getting are these I can'ts. And I'm wondering if the way they receive love and they receive touch and they receive, you know, communication with people is going to change in the next 10 years. I think it'll even change down to their social interactions. Right. There may be some children who come out of this and just become more introverted and isolated because they get so comfortable, you know, kind of being in that space. There may be some kids who come out of this and holy cow, they want to be at, at every event. And so filtering through that and, and understanding, are they continuing to self isolate because they just got comfortable there and they feel safe? I mean, that's what it comes down to even as adults. When we go through something as disruptive as, as COVID, we tend to go back to those habits, whatever, whether or not they're good or bad habits, that make us feel safe and comfortable. And so that's what our kids will do for future disruptions. How did they feel safe and comfortable during COVID? And that's what they'll do. I agree. But how, how do we help them say, self-isolating and kind of shrinking back into your house might not be the best way to work through things. Oh my goodness. That is a very good point. What do we do? We shelter in place when we get scared and things are bad. And that is not the way to handle most situations in this situation. I get it, but I think like, you still have small children at home and I have my granddaughter staying with us right now that you know very well, Lexi. And we just try to be like, really, cause she's 12. So she's, at an age where she does hear a lot. She'll hear the news in the background if we have it on, which we try to limit. But we try to like explain to her, if we got a plan, we make her part of that plan. This will end. It's just a process of like, you know, if you have to brush your teeth for years so that you don't lose them, well, this is part of us taking care of ourselves, self-care so that 
we can be healthy next week and the week after to do things. Like she wants to know why she can't go to the beach, why she can't have friends over to go swimming. And it's just weird. So we try to explain to her the best we can, but your son's younger, right? He's, yeah, he will be nine here next month. And it's really interesting. You know, he's a, he's a social butterfly. He loves sports and all of that is obviously on hold for very good reasons, of course. And so it's just readjusting. You know, we try not to be caught up in the news or social media. Um, we try to focus on what we can do to stay healthy, eating healthy, exercising, those things. And what can we spend this time doing? We're spending a lot of time on things being creative. Um, we're spending time thinking outside the box. You know, this is the time for him to not have necessarily his nose stuck in the textbook or the iPad with e-learning, but let's find some creative ways to do art class. Let's have gym class. Let's, let's go back to all of these things that we kind of did before technology took over. So I can tell you that I think that this is going to be a huge creative movement for us because think of all the actors. I live in Los Angeles. So all these actors are stuck home and they're creative and they have created the most incredible things going on. Like John Kaczynski's with his some good news. I love it. Like they are creating some amazing things from a home and still getting their art out there to people and actually touching them in a really positive way. So I love that he's being so creative. I want you to talk a little bit about what he's doing right now. He is, you know, he's such a unique child, as you know, Jenna, but he's doing a lot of baking. We're doing, we're learning some life skills and cooking and baking. And the fun part about him baking is not only do I get to help teach him life skills, but he always comes up with this great idea that we should make a particular recipe for a different relative. So last week it was, he wanted to make muffins for grandma. And so we made them and then we wrapped them up and we left them on our doorstep for her. And so he's still able to find ways to help others and show his love for others, even though he physically can't see them. And I find that to be just so beautiful about him that he's still keeping others in his mind. Your son is such an old soul. Like he really wants to reach out and make change. And one of the things that I wanted you to talk about is he's actually created something. Are you not allowed to talk about it? I will talk about it. It is so exciting and it, it just blows my mind that this little soul has such these, such big ideas. He sees infinite possibility in the world. So when he came to me and said he wanted to write his own book, I of course said, let's do it. And we're working with the publisher and the illustrator and his book will be out in August. I am so proud of him. Like, I am just so proud that he wants to be like his mom, but he wants to also put his words down in paper to make change, which I love. Yes, it's, you know, the, a child of eight, nine years old could tell a, a million different stories about playing on the playground, playing video games, all of these different things. And instead, he decided to use his voice for good, for kindness, to teach others about how much we can help each other. To me, that's what's so incredible about him. I cannot wait for his book to come out. You'll be hearing about it here when it does. I'll have him on because he has been a guest of mine and I'll have him come on as an author and we'll talk about his book and who he wants to, you know, touch with it because I'm so proud of him. Yeah, it's incredible to see the world through his eyes. So as a transformational coach, because I'm a mindset coach and I do believe that the power of your mind is so incredible that you can turn around illnesses, you can make change. As someone just asked this really great question in a social media group that I'm part of, and it said, can you be successful at some, a business you're not passionate about? And my first response was, of course, you can be successful at anything you set your mind to. Having said that, you probably won't be as joyful about achieving it because you're not very passionate about it. But then I asked someone else and they disagreed with me and I asked why, and they said, well, you gotta define what success means. Does success mean that, is it money? Is it fulfillment? Is it touching others? And I never saw it that way. I just saw that, yes, you can do anything that you want. But for transfer, as a transformational coach, how do you think we can do things now that'll help when this is all over to transition back into the world in a real positive way? 
I think a big piece of this is not denying whatever you're feeling that's going on, whether it's anxiety, whether it's fear, whether it's, you know, whatever is coming up for you right now. I think the most important thing is to work through it and understand why you're feeling that way. There's a lot of uncertainty that COVID has brought to the world. And so that triggers different emotions in different people. And I think the worst thing you can do is kind of file that in the back of your mind and say, it doesn't exist. I need to continue on. That would be the worst thing to do because that's what makes you not only dangerous to yourself, but to others, unfortunately. But I know a lot of, a lot of parents, people in the world are juggling three, four um, jobs right now, being homeschooled teachers, being coaches, doing so many different things that they're not used to doing. And so again, it's easy to put their own self-care on the back burner because they're just running a hundred miles an hour. But I think denying themselves that mental self-care is denying their families, communities, et cetera, the best version of them because they're how, not dealing with what's going on inside their head. How can they get some mental health care? Like a lot of people are not going to do the traditional route because you can't go to your doctor's office. You're going to have to reach out. How are some easy ways to, cause you shouldn't do this alone, by the way, even if you have someone to just talk it through with that are going to give you some feedback and like put that mirror in front of your face. Do you see what you're really saying? Are you receiving that? Like it should be received. How are some ways that they can get some help? You know, there, there's so many different ways and there's so many resources available to us now, which is incredible because had this pandemic happened, you know, 20, 30 years ago, it would be such a different world. But, you know, I practice what I preach. I have my own coach. I have my own tribe of, of women that we meet once a week and have just chit chat downtime. You know, I think ensuring that you have those people around you, whether it's a coach, whether it's just, you know, a tribe of local friends, whether it's a therapist, there's no stigma around finding that outlet to talk through what's going on. I agree. I definitely think you need to reach out to somebody because the worst thing you can do is be in that space by yourself. And, and here's the thing, like we're all dealing with this pandemic no one situation is the same. So we can't say that, you know, we're all in the same boat. We aren't in the same boat, but we are in the same pandemic. Every household individual has such a different scenario and situation that no two are the same, but we are all feeling similar feelings. We're all going through uncertainty. And we're all on trying to understand what this means and, and when, you know, kind of when will the stay at home orders be lifted and what will we go back to? So there is no reason that we can't share those and talk through them. Like, I, I agree with you 100% that talking about it gives you some comfort. It helps you develop a plan. It's kind of like when you're sick and you're going to the doctors and you know something's wrong and they're like, I don't know, let's try this. I don't know, let's try that. But when you do get a diagnosis, like say you've been sick for months and all of a sudden they're like, well, we have found out you have cancer. And you're like, oh my God, thank God. I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> There's something really wrong. And then the next thing is your brain goes, oh my gosh, I'm cancer. <laughs> but you have a plan now. So I think a lot of this going through the COVID situation that we're in now in this pandemic is we have to create some sort of plan of hope, right? What is going to look like for us, how we're going to come out of this. It makes us feel like we're, we have some control over it. We absolutely do have some control. There's so much right now that is obviously off of our hands and out of, out of our control. But those are the things that we can't spend a lot of time on. We need to focus on the things that we do have control over. We do have control over our health. We do have control over what we eat. We do have control on, are we emulating a healthy role model for our children or our community or our neighbors, whatever that might be. And we can't waste our time worrying and angst over things that we have absolutely no say in our control over. You know, of course, we don't wish a pandemic to happen at all, ever. We don't wish people to be sick. But what we can focus in on is how can we do right for our family right now? And the answer to that is so different for everyone, whatever their scenario or situation is. I, I, that is a really good point. And I think one of the reasons this has really not been very stressful for me is because I wake up each day and like today I'm not sick. I have 
everything I need in my little bubble. <laughs> my family's all okay. And when that happens, or should it happen, then I'll deal with it then. So I don't get ahead of myself. I kind of try to live in that moment. And I'm, I find joy in the fact that I do have all these great things right now. And that's so important, right? Finding gratitude and appreciation for the things that we do have instead of focusing on all of the things that we don't have right now, right? We feel like we don't have a lot of things, but we have so much and we have, you know, yes, you can say what you want about social media. It has its ups and its downs, but we have the ability to connect with people all day long that had this happened years ago, we wouldn't be able to. So what an incredible time that we have all of these resources and means to continue socializing. Yeah, it's a little different. I see you on a screen as opposed to at the local coffee shop, but we don't have to lose that connection. And that's so important. I think connection is more important than ever to get through this. I 100% again agree. I just, right before we got on the call, I was going through an app. We do this thing called house party where all of us couples that normally would have dinner get together on an app called House Party and you can actually play games like Cards of Humanities on there and you're all on screen and it is a blast. So we're finding ways to connect. And so when they say we're social distancing, we're really physically distancing because I have never been more connected socially with my tribe because I'm able to get to them every day, touch them, reach out to them and play games on an app. A whole bunch of us. It's so fun. I, I honestly think in the past 30 days, I've had more conversations with more people than I had before this. And it's interesting to meet new people. It's interesting to have this continuous dialogue, this social interaction. It doesn't have to stop. That's the incredible part of the world that we're living in right now. Well, one of the things I want to talk about, because I think it's so perfect for what we're talking about, is your freebie on how to live a happy life and conquer each day with peace in your soul. That is amazing. It's very relevant right now, but I think it's pretty relevant every day. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that is? Absolutely. So it's a, it's a free guide um, that I put together really because I think, again, the women that I serve and the communities are feeling burnt out. They're feeling that uncertainty, that angst. And working through how do we incorporate gratitude? How do we truly come to a positive place, even though there is, you know, kind of craziness going on in the world and living this life that is true to your soul, true to what you want for yourself. And it is um, several different pieces in a guide where you can help work through baby step to get to that point in your life. So you can get that free guide. You want to tell them where they can get that? Sure. So it's available on my website at wellnesswarriorcoaching.com. And um, I know that you're on most every social media platform. I see you everywhere because I'm a super big stalker. So <laughs> I'm going to have you tell everyone where they can connect with you, but it will also be in the show notes. So on Facebook and Instagram, it's under Wellness Warrior Coaching to keep things simple. Well, first of all, thank you so much for being in the book and being a part of it. I love your story. And I really do think it's going to send a huge ripple effect out into the world, along with the other ones. Her other two books, by the way, I have them. I just didn't set them here. They are phenomenal. Like they're, again, very powerful stories and it, they're, they're life altering for those people, but also the people who read them. And I think that's, you know, I say being an entrepreneur, being a coach, being an author is just as much self-development for me as it is those that I'm serving, because this is a way for me to not only heal through telling my story, but utilizing my story to tell others that you can heal. Well, Kathy, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing with us. And I just, I, you know, I adore you. I'm a huge, like I said, a huge stalker of yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me again, Jenna.